Hello, my name is Dr. William Bingaman. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Neurologic Institute at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation and Head of the Section of Epilepsy Surgery. The title of my talk today is What You Need to Know About Epilepsy Surgery. Epilepsy surgery is underutilized in this country with approximately 5,000 cases performed annually despite as many as 1 million candidates. Here at Cleveland Clinic, we have specialized in epilepsy surgery since the 1970s when our epilepsy center pioneered the use of surgically implanted subdural electrodes to record seizure activity directly from the brain. Since that time, we have continued to develop and implement surgical strategies to stop seizures in those patients who are drug resistant. Surgical candidacy is determined in patients having ongoing seizure activity despite anticonvulsant therapy by the epileptologist. For these patients, a pre-surgical evaluation is performed consisting of tests to record seizures, measure the anatomy of the brain, and measure baseline neurological function. There are a variety of other tests that may be ordered depending on the individual circumstances. Epilepsy surgery is often recommended when two or more anticonvulsant medications fail to control the epilepsy. There is a growing body of medical literature that suggests that surgery is superior to medical management in certain types of epilepsy. Successful surgery will provide a reduction in chances of mortality from uncontrolled seizures, a likely reduction in medication usage, more independence, and an overall improvement in the quality of life. The types of epilepsy surgery vary according to the underlying cause of the seizures. Most surgical procedures include removal of a lesion or abnormal area of the brain. This area may be damaged from injury or stroke or perhaps malformed from a congenital cause. The most common and most successful epilepsy surgery in the adult is temporal lobectomy. Temporal lobectomy is a four-hour surgical procedure targeting removal of the anterior three to four centimeters of the temporal lobe. This area of the brain lies just behind the eye and above the ear. The most common reason for temporal lobectomy is to remove a very specific area called the hippocampus. This structure is prone to injury and often causes specific seizures that are similar from patient to patient. Once removed, seizures stop in up to 70% of patients. Recovery after surgery takes six to eight weeks and patients are left with a scar on the lateral aspect of the head that is usually completely covered by hair, except for a small portion in front of the ear. Additionally, patients may experience headache and jaw pain for two to three months. These symptoms are generally mild and only require over-the-counter medicines to control. If surgery involves the language-dominant temporal lobe left in most people, memory problems and naming difficulties may occur. Often, these difficulties are present prior to surgery and although no better following surgery, they are usually no worse. Following the surgical procedure, seizures may still occur. The only way to tell if surgery is successful is the passage of time without seizure activity. At the six-month postoperative appointment, you will be given a series of tests to estimate whether it is safe to begin reducing medicines. Although many patients who are seizure-free after surgery are able to reduce anticonvulsant medications, only a few are able to completely stop this therapy. Surgery to control seizures is an invasive strategy and thus carries some risks. Fortunately, serious and permanent complications are rare and include stroke, paralysis, and death. General risks of this type of surgery also include infection and bleeding. These types of complications are generally less than 5%. A detailed discussion of the individual risks and benefits will be done by your doctor prior to any procedure being performed. The next slide is included so that the average patient may see what these structures look like. The picture on the left shows an anatomic dissection of a hippocampal specimen demonstrating the rich vascular supply to this area. The picture on the right is a surgeon's view of the hippocampus and amygdala as seen through the operating microscope. Finally, following temporal lobectomy, there will be an area in the brain that fills in with brain fluid. The tissue removed does not regrow. The next slide shows several magnetic resonance images, or MRI, of the brain after right temporal lobectomy. 
The dark spaces seen near the arrows are where the brain tissue was removed. Thank you.